Hello, first grade. This is Mr. Maraca, and today I'm going to explain and give you an example of what I want you guys to do in your book for this exciting inquiry science project about animals. So I'm going to show you an example of what I expect in this project and some ideas. Don't worry, it's going to be a fun, fun project where you guys are going to explore, research, and draw, and so many things you can do with it, and be creative. I'm so excited to see your creativity, your curiosity, and so in and your, and your science minds. All right, let's get started. So, first, this is the outline that I want you to first fill out when you're doing your project. And I want you guys to fill that out first because when you fill this out, it's going to make your book a lot more easier. So, Animal Inquiry Project. I'm just going to write my name. So, Mr. Morocco. So, the, so the animal I chosen... Remember to choose your animal that's from a different country. So to make sure to do that or research. And I want you to choose a different country because I want us to not only look at animals that we see every day like a rabbit or a squirrel. But also I want you guys to explore different animals around the world to have that international focus. So name of... First, I said name of animals, so I said emperor penguins, and then for, you're going to just circle one or write it down. Mine is bird, so I don't have a circle, so I'm going to, I am going to highlight it, bird. The country is Antarctica, because we want to make sure it's not U.S. or Indiana. Habitat. I chose the Arctic. Lifespan. Now, this is just a fun fact. They can live for 10 to 20 years. And the last one is what animal, what does it eat? So, it eats fish, shrimp, and other small animals. All right. And then the circle right here, I want you guys to draw your own picture or you can take a picture from the internet or something that you want to put paste there. All right, now this is your most important part, but tell me about three interesting facts about your animal. Because in your book, you're, when you are telling the story about your animal, you are going to give me some interesting facts. So I give you some in three interesting facts about my animal. So I said, emperor penguins are great swimmers. They dive up to 1,800 feet. They can, they can, Swim deeper than any other bird. And then the next one I wrote, the father takes care of the egg while the mother goes to find food. After the egg hatches, the father now goes to find food in the ocean. And then also, in the fact number three, they're the largest penguins in the world. All right, so make sure you fill this out, your outline, before you start your story to brainstorm. Because as scientists... When we research, we want to brainstorm. Now, think what questions am I wanting to ask? So here are some questions I want you to ask when you're researching. Think about, we want to think about what do I want to know about my animal before I research? So example, I said, uh, what do I know already? Well, I know penguins are not mammals. I know that the emperor penguins watching from Happy Feet, I know they love to eat fish. Also, I read a book called A March of the Penguins. I learned that penguins live in the cold because they have fur. Also, I want you to puzzle. As scientists... We have to puzzle and we have and open up our curious minds of wanting to learn. This inquiry of learning. So 
I want to puzzle and ask you, what do I wonder about my animal? Well, here are some questions that I want to ask myself and I want to explore on. What does it eat? How far can a penguin dive? Why can't penguins fly? What eats penguins? These are some great questions, boys and girls. I want you to ask deeper than just saying, where does a penguin live? Why, where is Antarctica? We want to look at questions that we cannot solve on our own, but using other resources like books, movies, because as scientists, we have to make, we have to go deeper in the learning. All right. Next, we have the portion research. This is the most important part of this outline. Research. Where can I find and explore this beyond the classroom? You can use videos and books. What I mean by that is, as researchers, when we research and scientists, we want to say, hmm, well, I can't find an emperor penguin outside the cl- out in my room. I have to explore beyond the classroom. But I can't go to Antarctica, and I don't have books in my book library. Because Mr. Moraka doesn't have books on penguins in his classroom library. Where can I go to find some more information? Well, this is the part that you're going to find out. For me, I said I, I can write a videos about penguins. I have, I have book witnesses about penguins that I can read. I know a movie called March the Penguins in a book. And I can use that as my source. When we find facts, we want to make sure they are true. Because that's what makes facts. Facts are true information and not our opinion. So we have to look at books, magazines, newspapers to find the real truth. As scientists, if we want to explore the truth, we have to do our research by looking at different sources. All right, jumping to our book. So All About Penguins by Mr. Maraca. So, make sure you have your title and write your picture. This is a table of contents. Remember, in a book when you're reading, it's impo- important to have a table of contents for your readers so you, they know what page is the information on. This makes the, e- the reader much more easier to access and to look through the book. So broken up our appearance, habitat, where does my where does it live? What does my animal eat? Facts, glossary and keywords, and then you have your index page. All right, moving next. So first is the appearance. So make sure you draw a picture. I just paste the picture on there, but I want you either to draw a picture or you can you be creative to use a picture online. So appearance, the emperor penguins are in the bird family. They have a black, white, and orange color. They use their sharp beak to catch fish. They have big flippers to swim very fast in the ocean. The penguins have wings, but they cannot fly. Penguins cannot fly because of the bones in their wings. Instead, they use wings for swimming. Notice how I had... I had color, so I'm going to highlight it, some points. Notice I had color, black as a color, white to describe their color as well, and orange. Those are some physical features. What else are some physical features by looking at this book that you can find? Right, shark beak. So they use their shark beak to catch fish. See, look at that. That's their shark beak. Then they have big, what do they have? Flippers. Great job. Highlight the red. 
They have flippers to swim in, very fast in the ocean. All right. And the reason why I highlight this word, boys and girls, is because that's one of going to be our vocabulary word in the section we, we have in our glossary. So I will come back at the end. All right, we'll come back to that. Next page. Habitat. Where do I live? Where does the animal live? All right, again, you have to draw a picture or something from the internet. All right. Emperor penguins live in Antarctica. They live in a habitat. Oh, another vocab word. Where it is cold and near water. They do not live in a place where it is warm like South America. The penguins live in small groups in order to pre protect from other animals. They also live in a place where there is ice. You can see the penguins sliding on ice to walk place to place. Notice in this section, I said they live in Antarctica. So make sure you have a location. Well, they live in a habitat where it is, well, is it hot or is it cold? Right, it's cold. Remember, we want to use temperature or climate or weather to describe where they live. And they near, live near water. This is an information that I wrote to describe something important to the penguin. So they do not live in a place where it is warm like South America. So that is just me explaining that they live in the cold, but not hot like South America. All right, and then you can also add other information as well. All right, let's look at the next page. All right, this section up here, it says, what do the animals eat? All right, this is the fun part. Let's talk about what animals eat because I know that we love eating and we want to we want to explore many things that our animal eats. All right. Let's read. Penguins swim and hunt different animals for food. They eat small fish and shrimp in the ocean. They use their fast flippers to swim and catch the fish. In the cold winter, the mother penguins hunt for 6 months to feed the baby penguin. However, they have to be careful because seals and other big animals love eating the penguins. Oh, all right. Well, let's see. What are the questions? What does the animal eat? Let's look if I answered all the questions. All right. So they eat big fish. Small fish and in the ocean. All right, so I'm going to highlight that red for great information. They use their fast slippers to swim, catch the fish. So we know they eat fish. In the cold winter, the mother hunts for six months to feed the baby penguin. All right, let's stop there. This is called, we learned from last unit, this is just supporting information. Supporting information is just in the blue, in the pink. This is just information that you want to tell us, the reader, about different, about not what it eats, but how it hunts and supporting details. And then we have another supporting detail that says, However, they have to be careful because seals and other animals love eating the penguins. When you write in your story, I also want you to find different information, like really fun information that only talks about what the animal eats, but also how related to hunting, well, how do they eat their food? Where do they get their food? Answer these questions and have a lot of details in your story. Next.
All right, this is the part when I want you guys to do your research come in hand. All right, there. The facts. All right, the facts. Penguins are from the bird family. Different from other birds, penguins cannot fly. They use their wings to swim in the big ocean. On average, the wings measure 115 centimeters, which is the height of a first grader. When I watched the movie Happy Feet, I learned that penguins are losing fish to eat because people fish and take all the fish. There are no fish left for the penguins. Because of this climate change, the penguins lose their homes because the ice is melting. All right, let's stop there. Remember, boys and girls, what is a fact? Right, facts are real information that is true. Then, Mr. Maraca, what is an opinion? Well, remember, an opinion is we learn we learned from last writing when we did a writing for opinion writing opinion is when you have your thoughts it's about how you think but is it true so let's look at some interesting facts that i want you guys to use that i've used as well so penguins are from the bird family all right that's a fact well where did i find it I found I found it in the movie March of the Penguins and Happy Feet and also different books as well. Penguins cannot fly. Right, that's a fact. Cuz we know it because reading previously and doing research, we know that penguins cannot fly, but they use their wings to swim. Usually like numbers like this, for example, on average, the wings measure 115 centimeters. Remember, like math and numbers, when we have no, those are called our factual information or real information. Usually with numbers, dates, measurements are all facts. Now, moving along. There are no fish for the penguins, left for the penguins. Well, that is a fact because when I did my, because I said when I moved, when I learned from the movie Happy Feet, or if I say if I learned from the movie or a book about penguins, there is research that there are no fish left for penguins because of climate change and also because there are so many people fishing for fish and the penguins feel very sad because all the fish that people are taking are not left for the penguins all right here's some did you know questions i want you to think of really good ones these are just questions that i want your reader to think think about when they're reading your amazing story so i wrote did you know penguins are the fastest swimmers in the bird family did you know they can't build any sort of nest? Did you know penguins are very social animals? They love to talk. All right. The most important thing is making sure you have at least three to five interesting facts. Please do not write an opinion. So an opinion would be an, opinion, an example of an opinion that I don't want you guys to write about your animal is the penguin. Let's see. Penguins are very cute yes one may think and I may think penguins are very cute or they I might think they're friendly or friendly or I could say penguins are the best bird in the whole wide world this boys and girls is 
not a fact, it's an opinion. So this is definitely not allowed or is not a fact. So erase that, make sure you erase that and keep it to the facts. Could you, when you're writing a report in science, scientists don't want to hear and read information about your opinion. They want to learn about what's actually true. All right, next. And this is just some extra space if you want to write more facts, the more the merrier. All right, this is some of your glossary keywords that I want you to define for your readers. When we are looking at a book, like a dictionary or a scientific book, you notice when you go to the back of the page, they have some glossary keywords. These words are words that they want to emphasize or they want to share and let readers know in case the reader does not have background knowledge. For example, I chose the word Antarctica, wings, and habitat. So I chose the word Antarctica because, boys and girls, where do we live? We live in Indianapolis. I haven't even been to Antarctica. Maybe some people haven't, but I'm pretty sure a lot of us have not been to Antarctica. It is too cold. So I want my readers to understand what Antarctica is. Because maybe I wouldn't know. If I was a first grader, I wouldn't know what an Antar Ant what, where or what Antarctica is because I've never been there. So here's an example of what I wrote. Antarctica is located at the South Pole and is surrounded by the Southern Ocean. Animals live in Antarctica are penguins, polar bear seals, and other animals. Make sure your definitions are in your own words, very simple, and try to add examples. So I said, here is the definition. The first sentence is the definition. But I also added some key supporting details as well. And key supporting de details are very important. All right, let's look at ne the next word, wings. This is also important because this, this is a vocabulary word that we know and learned from last unit, as well as, while well, some animals don't have wings. Does an elephant have wings? Does a giraffe have wings? No. And maybe, peng maybe we don't know what peng wings do. So for example, Wings are one of them paired movable feathered or membranous, meaning it's a mem it's a it's like a part of their body, parts with which a bird and inf insect fly. Well, we know that the penguins, the penguins use their wings to not fly, but swim. All right, next I'm gonna use the word habitat. Oh, Mr. Maraca, that's a word that I know. We learned it last week, right. But just a review, I wrote the word habitat. I wrote a place or a home where an animal lives. For example, birds live in a nest. All right, so make sure you have your three keywords. Make sure you, it's not something that's made up, that you actually do research, like in your own word. You can ask your parents. You can ask somebody close to you. You can watch a movie. You can read a book. Something that that's going to help the reader understand what the word means. All right, finally, index is making sure you identify which page is located everything on. This makes the reader 
more accessible and when you write uh, when you label what page is on what page it makes me as the reader to open the book really fast to know okay where am i reading all right here's some glossary words they have for you that you can use for examples such as amphibian animal bird classification eggs habitat living thing Mammal, plants, reptile, wings, different, different vocabulary words. You can either, you can also use countries as an example. These are some words that you can use in your book. Or you can be creative and find your own words that you want to identify and define. All right. This is the most important part when you submit your assignment. And I want you to look over this before you start and also before you submit it to your teacher. I would suggest, and I want you to do is, before you submit or write anything, did, ask yourself, did I include all the information that Mr. Morocco wants in my story? And making sure, I want you to making sure to go ask your parents and have your parents help you and check these off, like a checking list. For example, when we go shopping, right, we have a checklist and we want to make sure we buy everything and don't forget anything. Mr. Morocco for, went shopping the other day and forgot pizza sauce and he was making pizza. So guess what? Mr. Maraca couldn't have pizza. And pizza sauce is the most important part because that's because, well, it's pizza sauce. You, I can't, if, without the sauce, I can't put anything on it. All right. So looking at our checklist, I want you to look it over. So habitats. So I wrote where my animal lives. I made sure it inc included 36 sentences. I drew a habitat on my animal. Next. Same thing, appearance. I wrote about the shape, the color, the fur, the body parts. I drew your appearance. Now this part, pardon and praise. So this part I want to write where my animal, oops. What does my animal eat? So this part, I wrote about my animal, what it eats, what animal is eaten by, I wrote 36 sentences in my story. Now, the facts, I wrote three interesting facts about my animals. I wrote 30, 